In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can add your logo to your social media posts. And knowing how to add your logo, it can be really tricky uh, because it can overtake things. It can look really messy. You might not have the right sort of logo to add. You know, might not be sure where to add it or if it's important to add it. So I'm going to step you through those things in this tutorial because it's really important that our branding is really obvious on our social media posts because otherwise we're not building our brand recognition. We're not building loyalty towards our brand. And if our post ever gets separated from our business and someone shares it away from us, there's no way to find us again. So I want to show you how you can do that in today's video. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I am a brand and graphic designer who specializes in helping business owners create their own incredible brand and graphics using programs just like Canva. And so today I want to show you inside Canva how you can add your logo to different posts. I've got about five different ways that I want to show you because there's not one right way and there'll be different ways depending on what your brand looks like and there'll be different ways depending on the kind of post that you're sharing. And so the first thing I want you to consider is what post am I sharing? Am I sharing just a picture of myself? Am I sharing a picture of my product? Or am I sharing like a really educational post? Am I sharing a funny meme? Am I sharing like what, what, what are you sharing? Because that will determine almost what you need to put on it. For example, if I'm doing a really great educational post, maybe even a carousel, these are really great for that. Then it's likely that that post might be shared beyond me. For example, if I share like the other day, I shared one about the, the seven top business tools that I use for my business. And um, that got a lot of traction and I had my, I didn't even have my logo on that, but I'll show you the, what I did have on that very shortly. Um, but what you want to think about is what are you sharing? Because is it going to be something that's going to be shared far and wide or is it just more of an internal post for your current followers? For example, I often share promotional posts about a different offering that I have and that's more targeted at my current followers who are already warm and it's probably not going to get shared very far beyond me. Plus inherently because the post has actually got a lot of information about me on it, it's almost less important for me to have on my logo on there. So always think about first where you think it's going to get shared because that will help you make a decision of which of these options is going to be right. So I've got in here a Canva post open and I've got a few different options I want to show you. First, you'll notice that this post is not a square post. That's because on Instagram now, it's really great to do the tall portrait versions of posts because it gives you more room to show up on someone's scroll. It um, also gives you more room to design, which we're going to actually put the logo in this spot. Now, the important thing I want to show you is to make sure that if you're designing in this ratio, it's just 1350 pixels high by 1080 wide. Um, you can access that by just searching portrait Instagram post on Canva. But you'll see here that if I go to settings and show rulers and guides, I've added in a little guide here to show me where the square is going to crop because in Inside your Instagram grid, where you look at all of your posts all together, your grid is still cropped to a square. So it's important that we don't have any important information going out above these two lines. Now, I've just added these lines by adding a square in and pulling down some rulers like so. I've got a whole tutorial on that. I will link that now. Um, and so you'll notice here that I've actually got my logo down here at the bottom, but it's not in the main section of the post. Firstly, it doesn't need to be because that square section, I want to kind of keep for the most important information because that information is what's going to be visible from my grid. If someone's viewing my grid, they don't need to know what my logo looks like because they're already going to see my branding and my logo from actually being on my grid. Um, another thing to think about is that this logo is actually going to be too small to even view from the grid preview. And so there's a reason I popped it down here. It just gives us some more space to play with. But it's also important that you don't put your logo halfway between them both because it's just going to look weirdly cropped. I've had this little, little half a logo popping in when it's viewed on your grid. So making sure that you have it right below that line. So the first option of obviously adding in your logo into your social media posts is literally adding your logo. There are more options, which I will show you. But the main thing to remember when you're adding in your logo is that you're not fighting for attention from the other things that are in your post. For example, if I made this logo so much bigger, so say if I made it this big and popped that there just so that it wasn't getting cut off, maybe I popped it here. This is starting to detract from the text that I've got here and this definitely this text here. And so it's important to think about what's, what's the most important part of this graphic. The most important part of your graphic is what you're actually sharing in that graphic. It's not your logo. Your logo is more just something to build credibility and to build your brand awareness, but it's not the point of the post. So we need to make sure that the, the logo is large enough to be visible but not so large that it detracts attention away from the main point of your graphic, which is why I've made mine this kind of size. Now, remembering with all social media posts, particularly with Instagram ones, is they're most likely going to be viewed on a mobile device. So making sure that they're still really visible from whatever that size is. If you're ever unsure about if something is visible from a mobile device, literally send it to your mobile device or create open up Canva on your mobile and see if it's visible. So 
the next way that you could add your logo in is literally not adding your logo. And this is the post I did the other day. And you'll see here that I haven't actually added my logo. I've only added in my Instagram tag. This is because it's actually even easier for someone to find you when you actually write your Instagram tag on here, especially if this post gets shared away from you or screenshotted or something. People can always see, all right, White Dear GD, I've written that for graphic design. White Dear GD, I'll just go and find her on Instagram and you can search that handle straight away. This is a really great option because especially if you've got a lot of information on your post or you've got a really big punchy thing you don't want to detract attention away from, having just text on the bottom is a great way to add your branding onto it, but not take away from the post and not make the post look too busy. Because if I had my proper logo in here, that's probably become too busy because I've got this element, this element, all this text, picture of me, text up here, text over here. So having that more simple look is really, really great. And you'll notice that a lot of templates, if you go into the Canvas template section, if I search social media post, a lot of the designs actually already have this on it. You can see this one here. It's got their website address right down at the bottom. Um, and so many others have it like that. And it's actually a really great way to even make your design look more professional is just by adding the, that little bit of text on the bottom. So you see with mine, I added it like this. In the rest of this carousel, I carried across this text and this text here as a kind of a bit of a border for my design, a way to reference my brand and a way to reference the actual post in case someone forgot what they were looking at. They can re-remind themselves that it was top seven business tools. All right, the next way to add your logo is to not add your logo again. It's to add text of your business's name. So like this one here, I had my handle. You could even just do your business's name. So up here, I've added graphic design, white dear graphic design. That's my business's name. And it means that this is just kind of just small sitting at the top here, not really taking over the design, but it's there and really easy to credit this post to me, which is what's really important when we're on Instagram. We want to make sure that when someone sees your post, Remembering too, I always have to remind my students of this, when they, when you see a post on Instagram, it's also got a picture of you and it's got your handle right there next to the post. So it's not imperative that we need to have your whole logo on absolutely everything. What is most important is that your branding is really clear and really strong. When you look at all of these posts, you can tell that it's white dear. You can tell that it's me, even though I might not have my logo on everything because my branding is really strong. So making sure that your branding is consistent across all those touch points so that even if someone doesn't see your business's name or gets separated from you and don't even have your logo on there, they can still notice that it's a little bit to do with you. So that's the other text option is just adding in your business's name. Another option, which is really important if you have a really great logo suite. So in my course, I teach my students to not only just create one logo, but they create variations of their logo. And so you'll see here, I've got my little deer in the background. So my business, it's got the icon and it's got the text and the deer is the icon. And so this icon is a really great thing to have as a bit of a watermark in the background of your design. So if you have a really strong icon, think about putting it in the background of your designs. Now you want to make sure it's not taking attention away from the design. So if I put this is full transparency. That's starting to get a bit too busy, particularly behind the text. It wouldn't be too bad behind these boxes, um, but having that as a lower transparency just helps it to blend into the background, but also increase my visibility as a brand. And finally, if you have a really strong icon, you can even just use that as part of your graphics. So I'm going to be honest, my icon isn't that strong in terms of if, if I grab this little deer and I make him really small, if I I'll lift up the transparency and make him really small, it kind of just disappears. I always encourage my students now to create quite thick line designs just to make sure that it can actually be visible when it's shrunk down. So I've just grabbed this little icon here just to show you what I mean. But if you put your icon quite small at the bottom of a post, it's building your brand recognizability, but it's not taking away from the text of the design. It's not increasing like there's so much text and it's getting too busy. It's just a really great way to reference your brand. So just in summary, the, the ways you can add your logo in is to add what's what I call the, the simplified version of your logo. So adding in just the text version, particularly if you've got a really busy icon I recommend just using the text by itself sometimes. So I haven't added in my deer into here. I've just added in my text. It means it's not too busy, but it also means that I can shrink it to be quite small. Next up, you could just use your handle or you could use just the name of your Instagram or you could use just the name of your business. You could also just use the watermark in the background of your icon. And finally, you can just use the icon by itself. And remembering that all of those are put underneath the crop lines of where your grid will be cropped. So before we wrap up, I wanted to show you how you can actually actually add your logo in in case you weren't aware of how to do this inside Canva. So pretty much we want to add your logo in, you can just upload it in. So essentially just go over to the uploads panel and go to upload files and select your logo file. So for me, I have a whole folder of these. Um, I could just select this one here, for example, and load that into my Canva. Once that's been uploaded into my Canva, all I need to do is click on it and it will then appear inside my Canva. I can resize it using those corner sections and pop it where I want it to go. Another way that you can do that, say for example, you've made your logo inside Canva is firstly, you could literally just group it um, and copy and paste it. So I can right click and press copy, go over here and press paste. And I've got my logo there ready for me to use. Or what you can do if you've also made your logo inside Canva and you have Canva Pro is to select your logo, right click and press download selection, 
go over here and choose SVG and select transparent background. This will be a really great vector file, which means that it's going to be color changeable and will keep its quality really, really nice. So say, for example, I add that into this design, I can click on my logo upload. And you can see that I can actually change the color so I can make this white or purple or any kind of color that I want right inside Canva without having to go in and out and save my logo in different colors. So I can just delete that, pop this here. And if, if I zoom in really close, it's gonna be really crisp quality. I've got a whole video on logo design, so we'll add that in now if you wanna watch that more. Um, but in essence, that is kind of how you add your logo in. When you're happy, just make sure you press share. You can either export straight to your social media from here, or I like just to download it and send it to my phone um, and post it via that. Hope that's been useful for you. Let me know if you have any other ways that you love adding your logos into your designs. If you're watching this tutorial and thinking, one, Jackie, I don't have all these different logos and variations, or two, I don't even have a really consistent brand like you do, then I'd love to work with you. I have a course called DIY Design My Biz, and in there I teach you all about logo design. I help you work through your logos. I give you support to do that inside our community, and I teach you how to create and build your own incredible brand and graphics that your audience is really drawn to, that you feel really proud of, and that helps you show up consistently and saves you time designing in Canva. So if you'd like more information, on that, just head to DIYDesignMyBiz.com forward slash limited. I'll see you in there.